Hey, welcome, or oh, welcome back, to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know, hopefully you're watching this in black and white. Because this is a triple A collab with my girlies Anya and Anyaka. And on this occasion, we are doing palette bingo with the September Rose slush palette. And you'll know how much I love this palette. So, if you want to find out exactly how this looks in glorious Technicolor, which shades random.org chose for me, and what I'm going to be wittering about at you through this film, then my friends, you have the best seat in the house. Grab a drink. Grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Shh, food. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Right, I would have told you in the intro that this is the second round, um, or second collab with the Triple A girlies. Um, and we decided to do a palette bingo with the slush palette. So I'm going to pop up on screen the five numbers that random.org randomly gave me. And that's the five shades swatched. And I got four mattes and a shimmer, which actually is quite a nice, quite a nice arrangement for me. I think I've struck a little bit lucky with those colours because they do actually look like they're all going to blend together really nicely. So, I'm just going to take those off the back of my hand before I end up wiping them all over my face. Right, uh, this is still a teaching channel so I will still be going slowly, uh, mainly because of chronic pain <clears throat> but also because I want even complete beginners to be able to keep up with me. Okay? Right. Faces washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. Today I have a combination of this mini Paul and Joe primer, which is the Moisturising Foundation Primer Serum Makeup Base Shade 01. And obviously I've gone over the top of it with my antiperspirant primer, otherwise makeup's all gonna flip and well slide back off. Right, let's get you zoomed in. Oh. Oh. I'm not just on the struggle bus today, folks, I think I've been run over by it. I'm struggling a lot with pain. Um not just my usual arthritis and fibro, but my cellulitis on my leg has flared back up again. So, yay for that. Another new pain to help keep me awake at night. Marvellous. Right, I'm just going to quickly talk you through the difference between deep set eyes and hooded lids, and then we're going to get started. Now, when I relax my brows and look straight ahead, you can see all of my mobile lid, so I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if your upper lid completely covers right down to the lash line, part or all of this mobile lid, that you have a full or a half hooded eye, or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Now, I'm going to demo on this eye, because this is the one that I'm blind in, so I can make sure I'm still actually on camera. If I cover my visible mobile lid. Close my eye, 
you can see I've got as much loose space again, if not more, that tucks back away. If I cover the upper lid and do the same thing, you can see I've got lid space there that tucks back in as well. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that people with hooded lids get. This is why so many people with deep set eyes think they have hooded lids when they haven't. And they follow all the hooded lid guidelines and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. Could be because you've got deep set eyes. So, the workarounds. If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, and sketch out on your upper lid a new crease line. Now obviously it's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so use smaller blending brushes and if necessary take the colour right up to the brow. If however you have deep set eyes like myself, what we have to do when we're putting colours through the crease, usually the deepest shade, just relax your brows and just make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two similar but still very, very different eye shapes. Right. So I'm going to grab one of these duo colour blending brushes. Let's get started. Uh, on my lids I've got my usual Chrome and Pebble Primer. The white one in shade Cotton. Um, she does, at the moment, the six different shades. White is the lightest. The two deepest are a chocolate brown and a black. And then she has three different skin colour shades. Um, I do have a discount code for it listed with all of my other discount codes. And as ever, I state very clearly whether I earn from them or not. With the Crown Pebble, it's not affiliated, so I don't get sent money, I don't get sent free products. What happens is, every time a sale is made, she makes a note of it, I earn, in effect, pebbles, which I can then offset against a future purchase. Okay. Let's start putting some colour on. Uh, I think I'm going to start with cotton candy this is one of my absolutely most used palettes you can actually see the dip in cotton candy i can get the angle right there okay, look. but people say to me oh it doesn't look like one of your most used ones no because i always clean the palette before i put it away because if the palette looks dirty it doesn't inspire me to use it. Right. Now I hold the brush right at the very end to put as little pressure on as possible. And I'm going to start off up here. Tiny, tiny, tiny little blending circles. Going in this direction towards the nose. Bit of a bounce when we get there. And then reversing the direction come back again. I'm not too worried about fallout because I know it does just dust away nicely and to be honest I'm doing my base afterwards anyway. I'm going to continue doing the same thing on the other eye while I talk to you a little bit about the AAA group. So. I mean, regular viewers will know. I like collabing with people. I think that's half the fun of YouTube. Is collabing with someone else, you know. Sharing ideas, sharing thoughts, putting together something that we think our audiences will both like. And I love introducing you to people you may not have seen before. Although, to be honest, if you haven't seen Anya before, I want to know why. Because she's amazing. So, having just mentioned Anya, that's who I'll start with. Now, we're called the AAA Girls. 
because all of our names start with A. And I like to name my different collabs just to make it easier to find the chat in my Insta chat log. Right, I'm just going to clean this off on a clean washcloth. I don't like using colour switches, they're far too hard on the brushes. Especially natural hair, I mean these are synthetic, but if you've got natural hair brushes, for goodness sake, don't use them on colour switches because it will knacker them. And yes, that's an official term. Right, I'm going to go into raspberry, which is the lilac -y colour. Again, this has got a big dip in it. And I'm going to just put that over here. Now I do struggle here and here with very, very dry skin. So sometimes I have to really play with the shade to get the colour to lay down. So, Anya. Um, she actually commented on one of my films ages ago saying, Fancy collabing? I'm like, oh my goodness, yes please. Um, you know, I'd followed her for quite a while anyway. So I was really honoured when she asked me to collab with her. Anya is the collab queen of YouTube. She, she loves collabing, especially with channels that are smaller than herself. Because she loves to give people a leg up. She loves to introduce them to her larger audience. I mean, don't get me wrong, she, she also collabs with people the same size as her and larger than her. But she loves collabing with smaller channels and helping them grow. Because it is very difficult, the way that the YouTube algorithm works now, to actually get noticed. There are so many beauty channels now. It is very, very difficult to actually get noticed. It's very difficult to get a video go viral so that you start appearing in people's news feeds. It's just the way it is. I mean, when I started my channel, I realised there was a real lack of tutorials nowadays. Actual tutorials where people talk you through each stage. Don't just, you know, do one eye and then go off camera to do the other eye or speed it up or miss a step out so you don't actually know how long the blending is going to take. You know, at least with my films you have a rough idea of how long it's going to take you. Probably to do your whole face because where I'm chatting with you as well and there's an intro and an outro. Probably however long it takes to watch the film is how long it would take you to do a whole face. So including the foundation and whatnot. So, uh, she's just such a lovely person. She, I mean, well, everybody that I collab with are lovely because I wouldn't collab with them if they weren't. Um, but she's an absolute sweetheart. She's always trying to help people. She's always there with advice, with encouragement, with a cheer up chuck. If you're having a particularly down day. And she's just, she's just such a genuinely nice person. I mean, I knew when I started my channel I would grow a lot slower than most people. Because as all the big YouTubers say, she told me I just don't get the views anymore. Well, maybe they don't, but there's still people out there that are learning how to do makeup. Um, there's still trans women who... I mean, ugh. I know one, at least one that watches me who's in her 60s. She'd never put makeup on her face before and didn't feel comfortable going into somewhere like Boots or a Mac counter and asking them to do a makeover on her. But she'll sit at home and watch me and the step by step thing, it, you know, her makeup has improved so much since she's been watching me because I talk you through each step. So I knew that was something that was missing in the YouTube community. Right, I'm going into, oh, Blue Raspberry. <laughs> Didn't look at the names when I pulled the numbers. Oh, you 
use this just all the way across to do the crease. Obviously it's going to go a little bit purple when it blends with the pink. And I'm not tapped off, so there's quite a bit of fallout. But never mind. So, you know, I knew my channel was going to grow a lot s slower than most. But I also knew that hardly any of the bigger channels were actually doing proper tutorials where you actually teach people. And I've always enjoyed passing knowledge on. I've always enjoyed sharing knowledge with people. Um, I think possibly had had I not been forced to leave school and go straight into a job rather than go to uni like I wanted, I think I would have either ended up an architect or a teacher because I really do enjoy the art of just passing information on and seeing seeing people enjoy learning. You know, it's just and you know when I first collabed with Anya, I'm not gonna lie, she drove I think it's about twenty odd people all of a sudden joined my channel. Um of course YouTube then over the next three weeks knocked about ten off. Lovely. But yeah, she's just such a genuine woman and she's so lovely and she's, as I said, she's always, always there for anyone who needs help or advice or assistance or, and I love that about her, I really do. And then there's Angelica Liama, I think that's how you pronounce her surname. But basically, Anya is an Angie sandwich. Uh, Angelica is one of the Swedish ladies that I follow. Um, and I love the fact that all of the Swedish ladies that I follow, um, and I've linked them all, all of them, in the description box below, all of them have a real love for colour. Maybe it's because... You know, they, being so, so northern, um, they have very restricted daylight hours in the winter. So maybe that's why they love colourful makeup so much, because it's so dim and dark and they just want something fun. Um, but I, I just, oh, Angie's such a lovely girl, she really is. And she's so talented. I mean, some of the looks that she she produces are just amazing. Why am I going in with this brush? I need a smaller brush. Just clean this brush off a little bit. And swap it for a more densely packed brush. This is one of the Animal or Ranimal. This is brush number nine. You can see it's a nice compact, but still quite loosely packed. Don't you love getting an eye booger right in the middle? Still loosely packed like you can say. So and I'm gonna dip into black current. I'm just gonna use that to deepen up just the outer edge here and bring it onto the mobile lid as well. Yeah Angie I discovered I think I discovered Angie through Jessica. See the Jessica or Paulina that I discovered Angie through. And literally I watched one of her films and that was it. I sent her a message going, um, fancy collabing. <laughs> Thankfully, she said yes. Um, I absolutely adore her. She's so softly spoken and her English is I know she said in um, we did a a collab recently 
and I know she commented then that she feels her written English is not as good as her spoken English but I'm telling you it's a damn sight better than my Swedish um, she's so softly spoken and she's she's kind of the epitome of elegance she's she's got such dainty features beautiful beautiful bone structure um, and on her Insta she also does like outfits of the day and all that sort of thing as well as the makeup and I just I just think that she is so talented and majorly majorly underrated you know she should be having hundreds of thousands of of subscribers she should be up there well so should Anya I mean Anya does some amazing editorial looks because um, Anya's style is more blocky less blending amazing amazing editorial looks whereas Angie or Anjelica tends to blend a bit more and does more softer looks so whatever style of makeup you're interested in you know both those girls and hopefully me too will be able to uh, provide something that inspires you and makes you want to join in I'm really enjoying this just I, I love this this was Actually, September Rose was the first company to actually give me a discount code. And she did that when I was having trouble buying this. Because when I bought the Slush palette, she had a discount on at the time. Because um, it was newly launched and she got a introductory discount. I messaged her saying, oh, I can't get this discount to work. And, you know, what am I doing wrong sort of thing. And she realised that there was an issue when the website had updated. So she sorted that out and uh, I said, oh, that's fantastic. I can't wait to use it on my channel. And she said, oh, you've got a channel. Would you like a discount code? And I'm like, oh, thank you. I said, I'm not going to, I said, I'm not going to announce it until I'm sure I like the product. And she's like, no, that's absolutely fine. I'd much rather you were honest with me. So that if there are any issues, I can deal with it and improve the product than just, you know, sort of kiss our ass kind of thing. And that's what I love about indie companies. They want proper feedback. They want to know your genuine thoughts. And it arrived and I started playing with it and I'm like, <laughs> love this. Um, it is by far my favourite of all of my rainbow palettes so oh yeah I have a discount code for them too it's listed in the description box below and initially it was not affiliated but now it is so I do actually earn from it now see complete transparency with me you see how beautifully that all blended in, including that deep purple. And purples and blues are the most two of the most difficult colours to create. So the fact that those just blended in without any problem at all shows how good they are. Right, now for the fun bit, the shimmer. It's actually my favourite shimmer as well, so I was really pleased when that came out. It's actually the first number that came out and I'm like, yes! <laughs> right, I'm going to use, as usual, the Jeffrey Morphe JS24 lip brush because it gets right down into the corner. And once I've applied the pigment to the brush, I'll be wetting it with my Slay All Day in Jasmine because I love my Slay All Days, but the Jasmine one for some reason dries out my jawline. None of the others do it, just that jasmine one. 
So I'm going to pack some shimmer onto both sides of the brush. You should never go into a packed pigment with a wet brush. You will kill the pigment. This is uh, Blue Lagoon, by the way. Wet the brush. I'm going to dry the ferrule off. The easiest way to do that, tuck it in your knuckles and twist. Because the last thing you want is moisture coming down here and loosening the glue that holds the bristles in. Right, I'm going to grab a little mirror to hold down here so that I can see what I'm doing, but I still stay on camera for you. And I am going to apply this. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? As I said, I'm going to apply this to the two thirds of my lid that so far had no colour on it. And you can see that there is so much opacity to this shade. I did not need to cut the crease. And I'm just going to use the very tip of the bristles just to give a gentle buff just where it meets. Do you see how pretty that is? Right, I'm just going to dry the brush before I go back in and reload it because obviously I'm not going to go back in with a wet brush. Now, with my other eye, I've been very careful so far. I've not pulled my eye around at all because the skin on your eyes is as delicate as tissue paper. But, 40 years ago, my eye got pulled around at the ophthalmic hospital and they were trying to work out why I wasn't seen properly with it. And now I've got a super, super deep creasing right here. See? Using that barcoded effect. I'm just going to dry the ferrule while I'm chatting. So with this eye, I do actually have to stretch the skin out on the lid. I hate doing it. Um, but otherwise, the pigment gathers in those deep creases. And rather than being nicely blended like this, as it dries through the day, it ends up then cascading down my face and just looking terrible. But you can see I'm only pulling it out as far as I need to. And as soon as it's blended, I'm letting go. Now, this lid always moves more. Because although it's the same age as the skin on the other eyelid, it got pulled around a lot when I was a kid. So you can see there's significantly more movement with this lid than this one. But the tip is, if you do have to pull your lid out like I did there, only pull it out as far as you need to, or you don't whack it out to your ear roll. And as soon as you've finished the area where you have the creasing, let go. Okay, just using the tip of the bristles to blur the edge there. That is looking stunning. So lucky with those colours that came out today. I was fully expecting it to suddenly throw green or something at me just to confuse the matter. I thought, ooh, pink, lilac, blue. Ooh, this is looking good. And then I got, I think, the deep purple. And I'm like, oh, it's going to chuck me a green in now, isn't it? But no, it gave me another blue, which I thought was very nice indeed. So, I am going to pause you, my darlings, while I go and chuck some foundation and bits and bobs onto my face and I'll be back to finish off this eye look. Now I can't talk to you again until I next press record but for you sweetie there will be no delay at all so I'll see you right now. Hello I am back. Sorry I had to put the um, <clears throat> had to put the fan on because it was boiling hot in my kitchen. Right, I have grabbed my little flat top brush again and I'm going to go into 
I'm going to go into the purple, the black currant, just to pull that along the lower lash line. Regular viewers will know I've, I've always had very, very watery eyes anyway. And unfortunately, fibro makes them a million times worse. And then you add lack of sleep on top of that. And if I try and put something in my water line right now, it's going to look like Niagara Falls down my cheeks. And I will be doing a very colourful version of Alice Cooper's look from the 70s. <clears throat> right. This is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. I love it because it's flat topped but it's chunky so it's really good for getting up under your lashes and blending out. So I'm going to go back into that raspberry shade, the lilac, and I'm just going to use that just to soften that lower lash line. I was debating doing a wing but my eyes are still very, very tender today. So, maybe not. I haven't been able to film for four days because the neighbours had workmen in and they were drilling. I'm like, oh my goodness, this film has to be up this time tomorrow. Like, oh my goodness, I I'm going to have time. I had visions of filming this at 2 a.m. in the morning and editing it to get it up. Because I just thought, I'm not sleeping anyway, I might as well make use of my time. But then I thought, but lying down, at least my leg is up and there's a chance for the cellulitis to drain a little bit in the right direction rather than in the wrong direction. Right. Now. Highlight. I'm going to go in <coughs> with my While They Still Exist House of Sparkles Fallen Angel. They're uh, an indie brand. But they're, um, they're struggling at the moment. But this is such a beautiful highlight. It's a lovely soft sort of champagne because it can be quite difficult if you're very pale like I am and then you're neutral leaning towards cool it can be very difficult to get a champagne shade that will work for you that isn't too warm and isn't too dark I'm going to pause you. Oh, this was a cheap lip brush that I bought for me by about a decade ago, in case you're wondering. Um, I'm going to pause you one last time. I'm going to lob some more of this all over my face. Oh, what the high points of my face. I'm going to do mascara, lippy, something with this hair. And I'll be back with my finished look. See you right now. Hello. I am back. Right. Uh, the <clears throat> foundation, because I got asked to say what foundation I've been using. This is the Maybelline Dream Urban Cover in 095 Fair Porcelain. Now this has SPF 50 in it and <clears throat> in terms of how it wears on my skin it's very comparable to the uh, It Cosmetics CC Plus cream that I've got. Um, so I like this, but it's not as long wearing because it is more, although it says full coverage, it's not, um, I mean I've got it more as a, at a medium coverage today, which is what I prefer, um, and it's slightly more luminous, so obviously with combo skin it doesn't, it does break down quicker than it would do if it were a fully matte formula. The oh, 
powder that I used today was Jeffrey's in Fair <coughs> Butter Bronzer in shade Bronzer, which UK peeps we can now get in boots, which is blooming awesome. Uh, blush is the Jure this side, which is Adore Me. Uh, I showed you the highlight. Mascara is the Blowout Cannabis Sativa Revolution. And the Lippy is another one of the Charlotte Tilburys that my lovely friend sent me. This is shade Live It Up, which I believe was done for Liv Tyler. So, this is my final look with my Slush Palette, Palette Bingo, for the AAA Club. So, what do you think? Do you like? It's very 80s. It's actually very me. It's... it's in fact, I'm pretty sure I've done a look like this with this before. Um, just without the deep blue in it. I think I just did the pink, the lilac, and then I think I did the deep red, the, the sort of... Instead of the purple, I think I went through with this sort of cherry red shade instead, and then the blue on the, on the lid. So, I mean, you all know I love this. It's... It's up here all the time because it's it's one of my most used palettes, you know, off screen. You may not see me use it all the time on camera because I don't want people to think that I'm a Jacqueline Schiller and I'm constantly going, use my code, use my code, use my code. But off camera, this probably gets used at least once a week and given the number of palettes that I have, I'm just fanning myself at the moment because I'm hot. Uh, given the number of palettes I've got, the fact that this regularly gets used every week says an awful lot about its quality. So, if you are a member of the 4F family, you're used to me struggling with the top. Um, the thing is, because I liked this top so much, I bought about six of them in the same colour, so I can keep it the same most of the time on my channel. And I fight with the shoulder on all of them. Anyway, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are still deleting people. It's extremely frustrating. Especially for smaller creators like myself. Um, once you have done that, I'm going to need you to go over to my girlies. And do all those good YouTubery things. So watch their film. Like comment subscribe if you feel like sharing one or all of our films amongst your friends that too would be wonderful and we would adore you for eternity uh, if you are here from either Anya or Angie's channels hi hello welcome uh, I hope you enjoyed this slightly nutty half Welsh half Yorkshire bird Wittering away at you while she lobs colourful makeup on her face. Uh, if you've made it this far, I'm guessing there's something that drew you in. So, if you too would like to join the 4F family, it's super easy. You turn the subscribe button from red to grey, you hit the notification bell, you say you want all notifications, and then hopefully YouTube might actually tell you <clears throat> when I upload another film. Speaking of which, I've got an awful lot you can go and check out now. Just pick a playlist, put your feet up and indulge, basically. Right, my darlings. As ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous. And I will see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you.